Hello and welcome. I'm the Restless Kaiser, and I am over here. And I'm Johnny B, and I'm over here, but together we are Modeling, Modeling for, for Advantage. Advantage. JB's brand new box! Oosh! Is it though? It is brand spanking new. Now it's not a big new box. It's not a big new box, but apparently in here we've got British and inter-allied commandos as a starter army. So this is a new starter army from Bolt Action. I should have checked the price. In the video it will reveal to you the price as I'm looking. It's not sort of £100, it's more the price range. Oh gosh, I should have looked it up. More like 60 like the Paras. Okay, and and the American Airborne, they're smaller because they're very heavily infantry based. Mm. Yeah? Big time. I'm Big saying time. all this, I haven't checked, but it, it is a smaller box. So here's the Soviet one for comparison purposes. Look, it's like two Almost. thirds the size. Yeah? Okay. okay. We're going to look so at that another time. Right, so this is a new box, is it? Brand new. Um, what have we got in here? Okay, this bot action star army contains the following 28 millimeter models, because 28 millimeter is not dead. That, that is the scale. You get 36 multipose hard plastic commandos. Interesting. Uh, you get one Centaur 4 close support tank. That's that very says interesting. resonant metal. Yeah, we're going to have a look at that. I mean, we're going to have a look at all of this. All of it. Get metal miniatures for two officers, one medic, one radio operator, one medium mortar team, and one. Uh, MMG team, and then you get the bases, decals, stack cards, and various so other things. So you've got things. a tank, a mortar, a command element, 36 figures, is a probably should play as veteran. So there's probably about a thousand point army there. That's a fair amount of So let's get this open. Things. It is a smaller box, um, but it, because it's a veteran force, but it also means it's a little bit cheaper than many of the armies. Which is good. And interestingly, therefore, lower painting requirements. Less mo I veteran mean, models, you have to paint less. Of things, yeah. yeah, right. So that's. Oh, Johnny's not that. tipping it out. He's like. I don't want to tip like it. I want to savour it. And for there's all your plastic all right. screws. I'll let, I'll let you do the do the thing. Which which thing? Tell them what's in it, and then we go through it in all detail. Right, you get it? your fluff and some bases in there for your weapons team. Right, you just throwing that over there. Fire fluff. Fire fluff is a key component of any bolt action game. It's one of the best things about a vehicle kit. It's the only thing that matters about. The once, game. once you've got about 10 bags of this stuff, then you have kind of <laughs> billowing flames oh, so one vehicle you use in each game. I'm going to try and get rid of the boring things first. Yeah. Bases. Bases. Or infantry. Mate. Lipped bases. I like the lip bases. Yeah, because they weren't always lipped. No, True they were flat. They were lip bases. Discs. Why I like them is not just... Now, a lot of these newer models that they have, they don't have the sort of pools, the pudding pools at the bottom of the bases. Which I'm grateful for. Which you're grateful for. But in the, with the lip base, when you put your basing material on, you're not sort of lifting the whole model off the ground too much. It just kind of leaves it that little bit. This is true. And, uh, and fact, I like it for Surely that. that's more beneficial if you did have the little puddle. Yes, absolutely. I mean, they're a huge boom for those because it's nearer to flat. Mm, yeah. But even, even with these guys, it just means your basing material isn't a mound which on is top of the base, <laughs> which I like. Which does look weird. Um... Let's do the metal pieces first, because the sprues are actually yeah. a lot newer. Yeah, yeah, um, talk about those. So this one here is the uh, MMG. Sorry, I stood there. MMG so team. MMG team. The MMG so this team. Is, this is the Vickers. This is... This is... Whoop, our yeah. water-cooled machine gun of World yeah. War II and previous, no doubt. Tell me a bit about the, the Vickers. Tell me a bit about the Vickers. Uh, it's a Maxim gun. Uh, pretty much everybody went into World War One with Maxim guns. The French had their own ideas, but pretty much everybody did. So the so the Americans had Maxim guns, the Germans had Maxim guns, the Austrians had Max Maxim guns, the Germans had. They didn't. And this call, is World War One, so it, they didn't call them Maxim guns because obviously that's copyrighted by the Soviet Union. But they were. I think in most cases they were made under license. License. Well, here a Maxim is an American. Oh, it doesn't sound very American. <laughs> Maxim, Sorry, Mr. Maxim. Mr. Maxim is an American. Well, I never... He's actually buried in West Norwood Cemetery, I think. Because yeah, I've, I've worked in that area. I've actually been to the to the guy's grave. It's like, of all the random people that are buried in West Norwood Cemetery, just, Harry Maxim is dude, one of those Maxim people. Maxim dude is there. Yeah. Uh, so he comes along with this idea for, uh, for a machine gun in the kind of late 1800s, a steady rate of fire, and a water cooling. The water cool jacket is it is is a really important part of it. Right. So kind of the different nations take a slightly different path with it, but pretty much everybody is using what's fundamentally Maxims. What I like about it in the British forces is it's such an iconic piece of British equipment, the Vickers, with the two little, yeah. with the two little, the, the firing 
sitting on your little box of ammo or yeah, whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Um, sitting on a box of ammo, it's done it, it, often in the kneeling or in a squat position, um, as opposed to lying down, which looks a lot more pro. Uh, these guys have to look quite well, awkward. A tripod, mounted on the tripod. And then you get the little, whoop, you get a little, uh, this little can here, which is a condenser. So it's collecting evaporated water from the jacket. Not milk. Yeah, because okay. that's what this big round, that's not the barrel being huge, that's a water jacket. And that's what makes these things really heavy. This is really the test of time, right? If you're saying it's like World War One sort of design and then they brought it in... Into World War Two. Into World War Two with this cooling yeah, system. Yeah, yeah. Was um, the cooling system always there? The cooling system was always there. Yeah. Wow. So it's in World War... Well, so the first major air-cooled machine gun, I think, is the Lewis gun. It may not be like mm. the first one in the world, but the first one in service. You know that thing that's like a drain pipe with a drum on it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an air-cooled machine gun. And then you see things like MG34 and the and the, the Browning 30 cal, and they've got like those perforated steel jackets. Yeah. That's from an air-cooled system. Right. The big advantage of the water-cooled system, you should have to change the barrel. You just change the water. That's a lot <laughs> easier. That sounds a lot easier to me than uh, stripping out a barrel. The downside with it is water is heavy. Oh. Water is very, very heavy. With you. And in the First World War, so when we developed the Lewis gun, or we used the Lewis gun as our first light machine gun, mm. the Germans make a version of their Maxim gun, the MG0815, which has just got a smaller water jacket. But it's still, this the guy's still the carrying job. an extra seven pound of water around with him, and you need more water to keep it going. Well, so I think never... the kind of longevity of the Maxim type system in service solid. is air cooled. You need a lot of barrels. You can't fire many rounds through them. And if you want to do that kind of move Hollywood sustained fire, you can't do that with an air cooled machine gun. You need, you need to change the barrel after you put, two, put 200 rounds through it and you need to change it. That's nothing in the grand scheme of things. On the Somme, there were machine gun teams that fired half a million rounds in a day. Oh my God. That's terrible. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that that was a very effective use of ammunition, but, but, it, that's but the weapon system could do it. Using... Oh, oh, the, well, it's more about the sustaining action. Yeah. Yeah? So what you can do with a water-cooled machine gun is you can do that long-range barrage fire to a much greater extent. Keep that suppression That's what happens is you tilt these things up to 20 degrees, you fire them a mile away, and it's just raining bullets. Especially when you get 40 of them in a weapon section. So being as it's not so light, because you're saying they've got to carry a whole bunch of water around. And a heavy tripod. Which are renowned for, like, in my mind anyway, is being sort of hit and yes. run dudes. Why are they rocking an MMG? Why are they rocking an MMG? They're going to need some support, I guess, at some point. I don't know. That's cool. But they have them in this box. Fact. Yes. So it, it's an iconic weapon system and most of their star armies include a machine gun team. Yes. Why the commandos would have them? Because the other thing about commandos, commando training is multidisciplinary, is they could use, they were pretty free to use whatever equipment they wanted. Because it's like mission specific. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. if you, when you as an individual soldier joining the commandos or doing your commando training, if you want to use an MP40, you can use an MP40. They want you to use the weapon you're comfortable with. Sweet. As long as you get the mission done. Your personal weapon of choice. You know, you don't need to capture many thousands of these things to have a lot of them. Yeah. If you put in a very specialised force, you know. So commandos come with a really wide range of weapons. And that may be one of the things when we look at the images. I hope so, yeah. You might want to kit bash a little bit to give them that feel. Because they really could, like, what, what do you want? whatever they wanted. What do you want? And you need to learn how to use the enemy weapons because mm. you're going to be in an environment where there's You'll no respawn. You'll be enemy lines, man. You need yeah. to pick this stuff yeah. up. And you need to be able to shoot accurately with a rifle without having time to sight it and stuff mm. like that. You know, because you're going to be in those kind of environments. Heroes. All yeah. Of them. So these are a metal sculpt. I don't think there's anything new about these. No. I think, these I think been we've seen these before. For some time. And I don't know whether these are actually different from the Paras. Because they've just got the ubiquitous green berry. That's a good shout. I don't oh, know whether this is a different sculpt. There must be some different clothing, though. Maybe the jacket thing. Yeah. The paras have got that. The paras have got the denizen smock. But that's just camouflage, with, isn't that's it? That's just a camouflage you know, like, pattern on a, on, on a smock. Well, it's not a tunic, though. Right. So they probably look different to the, the to the rifleman. Yeah. These guys, I don't know, they don't look like they're in woolly jumpers, though, man. Definitely not. Um, they, they look a lot like paras to me. 
The, again, the packs may be slightly different. It's it's hard to know. That's interesting. Yeah, I might have to have um, a look at that. After. But we'll we'll wear available. We're going to be showing you pictures as these go. But you so, get an MMG in your team. You in, get in your, you get in your a army, Vickers MMG which in nobody there. uses. And then I sculpts <laughs> the beret. So the iconic kind of green beret, for, green beret for the Royal Marine Commandos is fine. But for me, Commandos is all about the woolly hats, mate. True, but I did hear in a documentary that the Green Berets are actually a good source of protein and very good for breakfast. That's a quote from an army movie, by the way, just in case you didn't know. All right, next lump of metal. Uh, next lump of metal is a mortar. The ubiquitous flame. Whatever uh, it is. It's three inches, isn't it, for us? The ubiquitous medium mortar, yeah. which is the starting point for any bolt action army. Right? Yes, you have to have a yeah. mortar. So this is, I think this is, in British service, is a three-inch mortar. So... Hang on uh, a minute. We've got a little bit of flash there, but that'll just pull off, right? Did oh. the mortars fire Is that belt got, fed? got belt fed strip? I think there oh. might be a bit of a miss. There might be a bit of a miss pack in here. We've got a guy loading a mortar bomb. We've got the guy covering his ears. I know that this is the guy covering his ears. It is an action that mortar crews do, but I feel they should either all be covering their ears or none of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, true. It's not like one of them's doing it and the rest of them are just manning up, you know, to get through it. So I think <laughs> one of the guys from the right, so machine gun crew... Right, so it looks like the dude with the map. Thing. There's a dude with a map who was packed in our machine gun team, which uh, the guy with the belt strip Ooh. was in. There you yeah, go. That's what it is. That's all that is. That's just the Smith pack. Mortar's good. You need that. Uh, in the game of bolt action, anyways, that's for sure. Medium mortar. You, you want a medium mortar, yeah. And, and when they don't include a medium mortar in the in the box, I'm Worry. like, well, that's the first thing I'm going to have to go away and buy. It's buy a mortar. It's buy a mortar. So they're in there. Pretty nice poses, nice clean sculpts in metal, not cyocast. Again, they're wearing the berries. Um, this 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 crewman with the map though, he'd make a great good spotter. Oh, if sure. I was if I had, with these, I'd incline to use this model as my spotter. And kit match somebody from the plastic just to, to use as my third random dude. to just be a random dude. Because he is a nice group. model, yeah. It is a nice model, it's and your spotter is often out in amongst the troops mm -hmm. rather than around the model. You you want him to stand out a little bit, like visually in the collection. That's that guy. He's not one of those riflemen or whatever. It's the bags, mate. They've all got bergens, aren't they? With ropes. That's what makes them different from the. Para. They've got bergens with ropes. That's what it is. Right. Unless the Paras had that as well. Mate, it was packed by Vass, which is you know nice. So was the other team by the looks of it. Vass so is, seen that Vass was is in the, the metal man. Ma Vass was the metal man. Uh, well, more metal. Last of the metals. Last now this of the metal is the characters and whatnot. So you've got a radio operator. You got a dude who looks... has got. What's he got there? He's a radio operator there. No, what With weapon a... has he got? Um, I think that is a slightly. Yeah, it's a Thompson, but it's slightly bent. The barrel's bent a little bit. That's oh, unfortunate. right. Yeah, 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 yeah. The barrel's bent over. That's that's what uh, it is. You've got. He's a Thompson. Captain. It's a magazine. Rather than drum fed Thompson. Yes. And I was looking at it from a funny angle, thinking, it it's got two angle. pistol grips on it. What is that? It's a guy kneeling with the Thompson. <laughs> You've got your uh, officer. You know he's an officer. You know he's he's yeah, yeah. And he's yelling as well, and his mouth's wide open. And I think he might even have a moustache, so good on you. For, for Maybe this guy looks like he's got a muzzy. Quite oh, possibly. yes. I mean, just I mean, just a strip, just a very yeah. fine, neat just strip. That neat though, mm. neat. Yeah, I lean into thing. that in my later bolt action forces, so that you can spot the NCOs within the squad. They're all pointing and they're all mustaches. pointing. They're all pointing. They're not all got mustaches, oh, but, they're all, but they're all pointing. Boo. And just, just, yeah. Hang on a bit. Is that a grenade? Is that like a a grenade launcher? What's that all about? That looks like a grenade launcher from Norm. Were they about back then? That does look like a grenade launcher. Or a blunderboss or something. What is that? I think it's I think it's a grenade launcher. That's on here, yeah. Okay, well, I yeah, think it's a grenade there you launcher. go. Get a grenade launcher in there. Uh, it definitely weren't widespread. One medic, one radio operator. And two officers. Metal miniatures for two officers. Interesting. Okay, so he's an officer too. And this is your medic. Which I'm, I'm yet to use in the game of bomb. One medic, two officers. One radio operator. Oh, one medic, one radio operator, so, and yeah, two officers. I think Captain Grenade. That's all your metal bits other than the metal and resin tank. Yes. Do we want to look at that now? 
Let's look at that now. Let's yeah. have a look at that. Let's have Are we saving the best till last? Well, Maybe yeah, because yeah. I feel like they're the newest parts of it. Okay. So this is a Cromwell no. Centaur. This is a Centaur. Are they so, different? Because right. it looks like a Cromwell to me. I don't, I don't get this. If you know different, I'm not like a full-on rivets guy. No, but you know. But I know a little tanks. bit about tank, about sort of manufacturing development and so forth. Centaur and Cromwell come out of the same program. That Nuffield was developing this kind of late war, heavier cruiser tank. Right. To replace things like Crusader. And that becomes Cromwell. But Nuffield was using the American Liberty engine, I think, which is a First World War era engine, but it was that tried and tested. Sounds... But they had so many problems with engines in the desert, and so the like, Liberty en one. the Liberty engine works. Right. Okay. It's you know it's a thirty year old engine, and it's a good one. We know the problems with it. We can deal with the problems with it if there is any. Yeah. Consistency is key. And so many British tanks that have come out in 41, 42, they just didn't work. Mm. <laughs> the engines were terrible. So Nuffield kind of stuck with the Liberty engine. I think it's that way around. Whereas somebody else was looking at the same program. Yeah. Had gone to shot down Spitfires, recovered the Merlin engines from them, because you couldn't get a Merlin engine. Merlin engines were going into Lancaster bombers, into Spitfires, you just like, and they're very complex. They're not designed for mass production Merlins. Right. And yet we need hundreds of thousands them. of them. Because they're decent. All of a sudden, because they're a good engine. And so this guy, and I forget who it was, he kind of went around to shot down Spitfires. And just ripped them out. Recovered ones that were, were deemed by the RAF and the Ministry of Munitions as unrecoverable, tinkered with them, uh, with a kind of, can I get this in a tank? Of course we can. That's and what that's, what, that's what becomes a Meteor engine, right? Which is actually used in a lot of vehicles. So right it's a Merlin the, engine. It's a Merlin engine that's been out. So it doesn't have a supercharger for takeoff. Right, yeah, okay. You know, things like, you don't want that in a tank. You've got like a, in a video game, you might want a supercharger in a tank. <laughs> then that's probably not very good for the structure of the tank. So the Cromwell ends up with this Meteor engine in it. And the cent what was what was Centaur is the one with the Liberty engine in it, but they were refitted. And then they didn't go to Europe. They didn't go to, they they didn't didn't go to combat. Go to Europe. Because it was so delayed that basically the the Cromwell was available when the Centaur was available. So, so it was just a training just, tank, yeah, lots around. of other things. But they did use the Centaur, right, in close support roles? So there was one main example of Centaurs being used. And that's that's D-Day in support of the Royal Marine landings. Okay. So they did see a little bit of action for what it's worth. And apparently the original plan was they were just going to sit on the landing barges and just use, because there's howitzer version of this. Mm. It's like a cop down 25 pound, I think it's yeah. 95 mil. It's not the full the full barrel length. And so they were going to stick them on the landing barges and tanks were going to stay on the landing barges. And just, just to, put, just to provide some direct fire AG. I mean, that makes sense. In support of the infantry. So the marine workshops took the engines out of these tanks, weren't needed, and then Don't somebody goes, extra weight. why do we not want to leave the engines in them? They're probably not going to get off the beach, but we might as well find out if they do. And, and actually, a few of them were still kicking around. A few I, can, I can imagine. Still pretty good. Um, in game terms, it's got a medium howitzer, so it doesn't actually doesn't elaborate as to what the weapon was in general. But yeah, there you go. Centaur. Now this is resin. I'm surprised this is in this. You said this was a new box. And I know they have a plastic uh, Cromwell kit. They make a plastic have, Cromwell. I have that. You've got the plastic one. Yeah. They make a one. plastic kit. I can't it's remember if it comes new. with the howitzer bit though. Don't know whether it comes with the howitzer bit. But to me, give you a whole tank in resin. When it could just give you two or three. We got your plastic kit out. We had a look. Now, yes. it was designed to hold a different engine. It may well be that the engine deck and some of the coverings, the hatches and so forth are a little bit different. But we couldn't really see anything obvious about that other than this, there's a there's a very high, um, I assume that this is the Gunners... The Dewey port thing. Gunners um, periscope. Periscope. Or, or something to do with gun laying because it's got a howitzer on it. That's maybe quite a bit different. But why they didn't give you the plastic kit and just a few of these bits? Because the resin kits are a lot more expensive for them to manufacture. Yeah, they are. Yeah, because, yeah. 
that's it. That's a fact. They are more expensive. It's got key tracks. It has tracks, but um, let's and, not go into that. And it's like on the outside, it's the same vehicle. <laughs> when we compared them together, uh, size-wise and everything else, yeah. Unless you're really into tanks. And you know which bit you're and looking for. Bit you're looking for. Because at a glance, we couldn't really tell the difference. For, for all intents and purposes, it's a it's a Cromwell tank. So it's resin and metal. Resin and metal. You're gonna have to use super glue. You're gonna have to chop you things are. up. There's some. There's some. And this is the things that I don't like about resin. I mean, we went and saw how the Warlord guys do their resin, and I gained a lot of respect for it. But as a model modeler, I still don't enjoy it. it, it right now, you've got some keying on the underside of this for the tracks. But doesn't doesn't actually fit. Doesn't actually quite fit in either sense. In, on either side, you're yeah, gonna have to do some chopping there. But more importantly, because it's just keyed as a bar, is you can actually put the tracks on the wrong way around. And potentially, <laughs> one could be further forward. <laughs> that's that's something that could be. Uh, so that's yeah. something to be mindful yeah. of. Now it is. It is a nice sculpt, I've got to say, you know, and the, the thing about resin is you can get more detail on it. Certainly more depth than you can get with it. So on the, on the plastic, if you, that's if, why they've done it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, it, you know, if you like your things to be more accurate and to have more detail, more fidelity, as a modeler, I much prefer the plastic kit. I do um, for, I, for I, ease. I much do for ease of construction and for not having a, you know, th these things you've got, you've got to cut and file and yeah. so forth. And it's, it's but it's going to give you a better finish, though. It's a pretty nasty product to use as well. Resin. It's pretty get, toxic. You get warnings now. <laughs> like, don't eat this. It. Don't, don't eat feed it. it to children. Don't inhale it. Yeah. It looks like you get a barrel for the normal. Cromwell. Yeah, the barrel. So they have the, cr the, cr the Crump Centaur. Centaur. There were lots of different versions. It was originally Dry. made with the six pounder. That's, yeah. Yeah, that was That's the British anti tank then. gun. Yeah. It was felt that um, we were one of the German, the key German tactic in the desert when tank on tank action was going to be a thing. The Germans did not fight. In the cavalry style, tanks Tally charging towards each other. You know, get me closer, I want to hit it with my sword. <laughs> mean. They didn't do that. What they actually did was bait the British tanks. They would they would feign to retreat, exposing a German anti-tank gun line. And we used we still use the we cavalry. We were still charge, using the cavalry charge tanks. thing. Yeah. And what we realized our tanks quickly often ran into problems. That although the two pounder and the six pounder have good anti tank performance, they were dead pretty poor HE. It's a higher velocity, smaller round. Right. So it, goes, it breaks through the armor better, but there's no bursting charge. Great. So all these. So then they were gun. making them for 75 mil. The American 75, which would share ammunition and so forth, because mm. I think the six pounder is like 57 mil, but its penetration is better than the American 75. I its armor penetration is better. Yeah. It's same but different. Same but different. No, it's better. It's better. Fact. It's 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 got better penetration better. at range. But it's not knockout chance isn't necessarily better because that's about how much damage once you go through as well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah. So they made for the 75 mil. They also then they made a proportion of them with a the howitzer, which was the 25 was pounder. Meant to be, yeah. So there's, there's several different options. versions of Loads these. Of different options. And they were hoping to put 17 pounder in it oh! when they could fit one in and when they were enough 17 I pounders. I think that would have fit. Yes, yeah, so there is. It's, um, is it, there is a, it doesn't get to Europe. Oh, don't they? There's a 17 pounder stretch Cromwell. What's it called? Challenger? No. Is it the, Challenger? It's one of them. I is think it, it, might, it might be Challenger or Comet. or Comet. It's one of one of them is the Because we've seen it in the fifth in the in the fifteen mil stuff, yeah. You're yeah. Whacking great there is target. it's the kind of successor to, to Firefly, but it and it's built on but it's on a stretch Cromwell hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is what I wondered about Centaur, why I wanted to check. But that's that's the same hot oh. That is the same, yeah. That but is the same for all intents and purposes. Uh, uh, but they were used by the Marines, they were used on D-Day, and they were kicking around somewhere. Handful, bearing in mind the bolt action is a platoon level action, you could have to take one of these things to Berlin. You could be telling that story. Do it. Just kicking around with a few Marines. Uh, get the decals for it as well. Now, it's not just, you, you'll notice that it's called Inter-Allied Commandos, because Inter it's not just us Brits that were commandos. No. There were many others, French, Poles, Danes, Danes. 
and many others. So you get you Norwegians. get a, you get a healthy amount of uh, decals on there. Not that it's specific to this box, but you get a British armor decal sheet, which does cover some canads. You've got your desert rats and various mm. others there. So that's cool. Uh, got your decals for your normal. Slight segue, so Mrs. Kaiser doesn't kill me and does actually feed us tonight. We do actually sell this on the Modeling for Advantage <laughs> web store. Uh, I'm just going to shield for a moment, John. Uh, why not do it? In the UK, at time of recording, we have 15% off. Please do consider buying your bolt action products from us. Sweet. Back to the review. So here we are. Back we are with the uh, the main the main event, the main, the main meal. meaty part of this box. So what's this sprue called, John? I should have got my reading glasses So out. one would hope it says Inter-Allied Commandos, and it does. It does say Inter-Allied Commandos. Right, at the very top there. And it's a 2020 sprue, so it's it's pretty, pretty damn recent. It's not their first Commando sprue. It's not their first Commando sprue, because I actually possess some of their original Commandos. Yeah. And that was based off of the old style plastics from Warlord, where you had the separate arms and the separate weapon system, which is fiddly. Very fiddly. But some would say you have fiddly. a few more options. I feel that they've, what they've been doing is they've been remaking a lot of their kits. And they did, they did most of the British kits. Yeah. Is they're moving from having, they, they used to go with the system, and it's still there with some of their kits. Right arm, left arm, weapon, Whoa, try and get it all to fit and different on each bonnet. Yeah. They're increasingly moving to this arm and one arm with weapon attached, another arm that just slots in against it, yeah. or even does some else. There's a lot of them just holding a weapon in one arm from a modeling perspective. And these are gamers' kits, not modelers' kits. Yeah, for ease. For they're ease. A winner. If you play ball action and you play an infantry heavy army, you might need 50 or 60 of these guys. You know, so I'm I'm vastly delighted that they're moving down this down this approach mm. you occasionally still see the odd one that requires a second arm but generally speaking though. and more to the point you're not having to balance the weapon in yeah. the open hand and the, yeah yeah that's that was a big thing yeah absolutely so you don't not, have like the hand not quite reaching yeah. the weapon or having too big a gap <laughs> it's like i'm holding my weapon like this <laughs> But that's they've evolved, and yes. this is this is this is what they've got. So I don't think you can still get that other kit uh, for those of you that have no, some of them. You might be able to, can. but I don't think you can. So from the top, John, we have got some heads. Heads, mate. Um, heads are always good. And the only heads that you really need are berets and woolly woolly caps. And of that choice, there is only one choice, choice that is the right choice. Oh, it's I don't know the what to say. It's the woolly cap. It that's is the, the woolly hats. Now I think you painted some of your woolly hats green, didn't you, John? Um, I don't know if I actually have any woolly hats. Believe you don't have any woolly hats. The woolly hats. No, it's a lie. I do. Yeah. But it's not from these kits. Woolly hats should be black. Because, you know. Because it's about nighttime stuff. It's about stuff. nighttime. <laughs> the woolly caps are generally black and they're for nighttime. Black in the faces, black woolly hat, black suit. Go do your sneaky Go stuff. Go do your sneaky, sneaky stuff. Yeah. The berry is more like, you know, daytime uniform. <laughs> it's like. These are, yeah, na, na, they're That's more for, for nighttime raiding, the woolly hats. That's for business. Um, this is for to be honest, around. In straight up action, I don't know whether a lot of them probably did wear their helmets. I mean, they want to live. Would right? they though? They're pretty, they, you've got to be of a certain mental. Capacity to, to, to be a commando, full stop. I get the woolly hat because that's about stealth. I don't get the berry. And warmth. Um, that's just a statement, isn't it? Yeah, really? yeah, yeah. And, and most people will paint their paras, they will paint them with their berets on. Yeah. You get a dozen heads, uh, six of each, six berets, six <laughs> woolly hats. You get burgons for everyone, I think. I'm just checking now. You get four yeah. burgons. And like they've done again with their newer kits, it's not like there's six identical burgons. No, they got the equipment all, is all, all different. slightly different. So between the one, two, three, four, five... Is there five guys? One, two, three, four, five packs, and we get one, two, three, four, five, six guys. So you get one kneeling and five standing. I bet there's walking. another pack, we just haven't seen it yet. Yep. There's, one, there's three Bergens two, there, three, and then there's three in a row. Four, five, six, yeah. Okay, so some are dispersed, but there is yeah. enough Bergens for everyone. But the fact that everyone's pack is slightly different between the six Bergens and the six bodies. Mi yeah, man. mixing, mixing. They're going to look just that little bit different that good. with the, with the heads because what they're not going to do is make another sprue of no, marines no, 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 or no. commandos anytime soon. Um, weapons, other weapons options, or sorry, rather just the weapons options. Yeah, the weapons what, options. Rifles. You get one, two, three, four, five, six Leonfields. So that's good if you just want to have. Uh, rifle section, and you also get a bunch of SMGs, mainly Thompson by the looks of it. 
It's all Thompson. Yeah, so that's about era. I think Sten is late. Because these are, yeah, well, yeah, they cover a and, whole and bunch Thompson's of And Thompson's a heavier they? bullet. It's 0.45, isn't it, rather than pistol caliber? A lot more stopping power. A lot more stopping power, yeah. And a lot more kick. But these are real men. Real men. <laughs> real men. <laughs> uh, Absolutely. What else do you get here? You My, get I think the survival rates in the commandos are terrible. I really... Well, you're all doing some real... Yeah, yeah, Seriously a lot of the, a lot of the commando rids, they don't come back. Oh. They don't work. You know, these are high risk operations, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. Ballsy. High risk, high reward. Ballsy move. Yeah. Uh, you get a two inch mortar down there. You've, You've got a two inch mortar. You're looking at it the wrong way. Yeah. Not the wrong way. <laughs> I'm looking at it the wrong way. Because <laughs> it's not the way, way I'm looking at it. Yeah, yeah. 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 So this has uh, been carried a two inch mortar. You've got the mortar carrying tubes, mm. which you can use with the regular mortar, I think. Yeah, Bono's. Oh, there's a Piat. There's a Piat there. Piat. I feel like I saw man. one. Piat. There, there it is. Now he's, he's running there. with it. It's and he's, not and he's carrying it rather than in a firing yeah. position, which is a bit more Marines y. There's oh, nobody on his belly here. Which I like. I do, yeah. I know we spoke to Paul about this. He does like a prone model. Well, he and tries I get because like the LMG and stuff. Yeah. It makes a bit of sense. It I makes sense. I prefer I prefer kneeling. The problem with the pro model is it is it's the bit the footprint of the model. Yeah. The footprint different. of the model is different from the rest of the unit and looks really weird stood next to a standing guy. Doesn't look weird next to a kneeling guy. Yeah. It looks weird next to a standing guy. It's so then you have to think about like as you look at your model and say, like, oh no, no, I'm gonna have to swap these two figures around so that the, the, yeah. It looks right. And they're all right on a base, separate base. You know, for a machine gun team or something. Oh, yeah, on the, on the, the bigger, model. like, four like wheels and stuff. I like a pro model exists, but I don't want one in six. Yeah. Here's the yeah. thing. Yeah? There's a kneeling <laughs> guy. Uh, other weapons, I think I did see on something. Did you see the, the Uber gun? You mentioned it earlier. I that, mentioned that. That. Yeah, so that's a drum fed. No, that's a Lewis gun, right? Is that supposed to be a Lewis gun? I think it is. That's their... That's their renowned... Oh, Doofer maybe... Gun. Maybe it is. So they're renowned, you say? The Marines liked it? Well, the commandos liked so. it? I think so. The commandos, yeah. They used to, for whatever reason, I don't know the specifics. Maybe a high rate of fire. It's, it's, heavy. it's not high rate of fire. Is it not? I mean, it's high rate of fire compared to a, a matter bolt action rifle. To a Bren. No, I don't think so. Was it lighter? It could be, but I don't think That's so. That's the only reason I'd want to be taking it. If I'm moving a lot, I want to take lighter Well, equipment. magazine size. And this it's, has got the big... It's drum, drum fed. On the top. So it's, it's very easy to fix jams. Because it's quite it's quite open. You take the thing off. And you, Throw that away. You sit, yeah. Have another one on. Yeah, that will, often solve, that will often solve the problem. It's quite... It's very easy to reload. It's got a high... For one man... A one man weapon. Yeah. Like the Bren has... Is good, but it's got quite a sm relatively Limited small magazine. magazine. Yeah, Where this is maybe. Just... I don't have just been about the uh, the shape. There can be all kinds of reasons. Yeah, yeah, interesting. But I'd love to know if anyone, if does anyone why, why they seem gun? to prefer it. Seem to be a thing, or it may have been an availability issue. It may have been because we might have had like fifty thousand World War One pattern Lewis guns <laughs> still kicking around. So it's like you can have as many of these as you want, or one bread. It's like, oh, we'll go with as many of those as you want. <laughs> I think I like that idea. One more bread. Could be, could be any number of reasons. So that's good to see in there. It might be just that it is easier to fire from the hip. Maybe. The Bren might have a bigger kick. Yeah, I don't know. Because this even... Because uh, the Marines kind of fight like the BAR. Firing from the hip is more of a thing. They're on the move, right? And they're on the move. They even got to, they've got to get things done. Might have something to do with that. It might be slightly different ammunition, you know, lower, lower grains. But I don't know why they bothered. Because do you know why? They've got knives, mate. Because they've got knives. You can just give them a knife. And you get enough knives here to give everyone that. What's it called? It has got a name. The uh, commando knife. Sykes, I'm not, I'm not a bird guy. whatever. It's, it's, a not, a it's not a knife guy. It's not a bowie knife. No, I know it's that not much. It's not, it's not a cookery. But it's that little jabby, stabby dagger. The jabby, staggy, stabby yeah, dagger. Yeah, but there is a whacking great big dagger on here. And there's, and there's a few options for it as well, isn't there? In the there's like a guy of... brandishing it. There's it's a quite, dude with a massive chopper. <laughs> it's quite <laughs> broad bladed, isn't it? Yeah. That isn't their That isn't their standard that's dagger. Not the knife. That's someone with a short sword. Call that a knife. Yeah, yeah, he's doing that, isn't he? Absolutely. So you've got a pistol in a hand there as well. These are pouches for your Lewis gun. 
There are uh, options. There are options on here. It's no, it's a nice kit. Um, you got the you got the arm in a sling, or is that binoculars? Oh no, that's binoculars. binoculars. That's an interesting. And you get the little map. You see why I thought it was an arm in a sling. I can see that, yeah. Because it's it, it, yeah. it's got the thing over there, and it's a binocular, and it's just on one arm. Yeah. So it's going to fit slightly differently on different models. That's an interesting bit of model mix. We well, got the map model kit. We got the map bit as well. And the same so with the map house meant to be. Yeah. Yeah, those two would. You've all together. seen this most probably, but yeah, because it's, it's, it's been out for a little while. But we we it's have a 2020 been. kit, but we've not seen it. So compared to the old kit, the old old kit, the old old kit. Yeah, even down to the point, the old day. old kit, you had to put the berets on. They were individual. Oh, you had to glue them onto their to nuts. glue their hats on, and that wasn't fun. <laughs> right, but because you didn't need to have them on at a rakish angle. You could put them on on some weird angle. You could put them on a bad that's angle. That's not good. Yeah. yeah. So no doubt some of mine have got them on pretty weird. But yeah, this is it's all catered for. You got a good set. It looks like it covers all of the weapons options as well, which I'm grateful for. So there's enough SMGs in there. There's a couple. Because commandos. Oh, there's only three. I retract There's that only six statement. models here. I retract that statement. Yeah, but if you want a full squad of SMGs, because you're there... being all beardy and stuff. Uh, right. I think okay. commandos you can. Well, no, but beardy players don't take SMGs on Marines because they don't come at us because they already get tough fighters. That's exactly that right. That is a fact. Rifles, and I know this because I have my dudes are <laughs> You know, your dudes have got because rifles. Because of that very thing. Because you can fight 10 rounds rapid or yeah. using that British Mad Minute or whatever rule, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you're still tough fighters. You're rather than paying for some machine guns. <laughs> that's that's being beardy about yeah, it, mate. I just remembered that. Yeah, how I do that. Um, so yeah, the only thing I, the only thing I would say say about these is you wanted to to give them a real kind of commando raiding party feel. Yeah, is to make sure you use the woolly hats, but you might want to kit bash in some German bits. You might want to kit kit bash in some Italian bits. Just switch out a few of the rifles. Things are yeah. Uh, the in terms of things that might be missing from here, what they don't do. I do wish they gave you a scoped rifle on here. Just to cater for so specialists. Cater, cater for the cater for, cater, cater for the sniper. But even just in some people who want to be like accurate in models, I think most armies either at platoon or squad level, depending on who's which man's army you're in, there was a scoped rifle. There's a marksman. You give it to your best unit. shooter. Right. Yeah, yeah. At the Americans, it's done at platoon level. At the Germans, it's done at platoon level. But there are some scoped rifles kicking about. They don't need to do anything in game, but they're not that. They're not as just for the aesthetic. Yeah, and it allows you to build a sniper model, which again allows you to put those sort of kneeling and pro models to other uses, like the Lewis gun. But again, you could put a Bren in there. You could put an yeah. MG34 could, in there, yeah. you could, because the commandos get to choose what they're doing and what they're using, and I like yeah. that about it. Sweet. As an army? As an army, yeah. Expensive, points-wise. Because if you take them all it's veteran, all veteran uh, if you actually pay for the SMGs rather than cheese it. Yeah, for, for whatever reason. Um, and the Lewis guns, there's still 20 points or whatever they are. Yeah, um, there's still what is nice these. is you get options here to make those little niche bits like the, the two inch mortar and mm. you can have a spotter and various, you can't make the sniper as we've just said, but you can make a few extra teams out of that. So I think you've got a fair few points in here. You've got your medium mortar, you got your metal command team, yep. you've got, you've got, you've got a that. tank with a medium howitzer and in game that's, that's going to be points. good. Did we mention there was, was there a unit card? There is a card for the tank, yeah. Yeah. We didn't really, we didn't really look, look at, it, at the tank. It is stats. Uh, Mark Four. The Crusader Mark Four. So it's got what two medium machine guns and a medium howitzer. And a medium howitzer, what are the stats on the medium it's not howitzer? Bad. Is it, it's what's got the template inch, size? Six inch range and you're looking at uh three inch. Three inch template. Which is, is not to be And the tank itself costs at. so many points. So it's late war only, you can have it regular, mm. which is Decent. 195. 200 points for a three inch, point three inch direct fire template. And you've still got a whole mounted machine gun. Yes. That you can fire as well. Yep. Right. Okay, so the petard is terrifying on, on the big, big that tank. That is on a church. But this way. is on a cheap hull. Yeah, that's pretty good. I just think that's quite a gamey tank. For 200 points. No, for not, not like it's proper gamey. It's, yeah. But it's, it's, but it's still only a medium tank with nine up. You know. Yeah, so you're not, you're not paying a lot of points for it and you're getting a three inch template. And you can only use it late war. It's got you can only use it late war. Fact. This is this is late war. Although it's mainly the tank 
that's late war. But I don't think yeah, that commandos, kind of, so. the commandos, I don't think that they're really going in any kind of force. I think that this army is a, is a, the, the centaur, it makes it, this is designed to be a D-Day landing force. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But that doesn't mean you can't use it other things. No. Solid. Solid group of models there. Get all your supports and everything else. Yeah, I, th I, I think it's good. I think it's, I would happily take this and, and, and build a force. And I, I can't imagine you get much change out of a thousand points if you take this all as veteran. No. Yeah, so it's like 36 troops plus. You know, 36 so guys, you're HQ, good. et cetera, tank. You're, you're not far off. Happy days. You might even be there. I think it's all right. And it's a great new plastic sprue. And it's commandos, come on. It's, it's commandos with woolly hats, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy our content, like the video, maybe leave us a comment. Thank you.